So the subtitle is I Hate Berlin. Let's see what it says here. Before I moved to Berlin, I visited twice. Both trips were at the height of summer when the sun stayed out past 9 p.m. and every park looked like a hobbiton back yard replent with checkered picnic blankets piles of mountain cheese and half liter beer bottles it was nice at least between june and september <laughs> yeah okay they started off hot this is very true they've started off hot it definitely is the best place to be june through september but the other months ooh, which is weird because i actually prefer to go to berlin outside of june and september because it's too warm i just can't handle it and that place doesn't have you know places don't have good air good, good air conditioning you know the beer is nice because usually most places have chilled glasses so you can enjoy a nice cool beer a nice cold beer but it's too warm for me so i like to go before june or after september but we digress there was always a cool club to try out and duh anywhere is affordable compared to new york but what I now know now is that deciding to move to Berlin purely based on the wide-eyed summer visits was kind of like watching, say, a movie trailer for a musical that doesn't make it clear that, by the way, this is a musical and now it's too late. Oh, <laughs> that's a brilliant analogy. That's a brilliant analogy because I, I could imagine the amount of people who move to Berlin based on the summers because literally the summers in Berlin are like summers in London. They're fucking magical. But... The summers in London are not representative of your whole entire year experience in London at all. Zero. I think the same, same could be said for most cities around the world. But I think particular with Berlin and London being so dreary and wet, especially Berlin, it's actually way more. I think we're, we have a bit more of a soggier, damp you know, environment. But I think Berlin has a scenery where it's all grey. It's a very ugly city. Like I said, like the architecture is horrendous um every other wall like i don't know graffiti i don't think there's any rules in graffiti in berlin i think i remember here in london there's like rules with graffiti where you're not meant to graph up residential homes and shit um but it doesn't exist in in berlin people graph anything anything with a wall gets fucking spray painted and they don't try and clean it off so everywhere looks like a fucking bomb site everywhere looks like a squat it's fucking crazy it continues granted moving anywhere involves a period of post u-haul clarity but i'm holding from um in the belief that berlin does not rightfully does not frightfully better no sorry let me continue that granted moving anywhere involves a period of post u-haul clarity but i'm holding firm on the belief that berlin does a frightfully better job of hiding its shortcomings than anywhere else it's been eight years since i've moved here and i'm still finding new things to cringe at every day Take the white people here. For instance, I have possibly never seen so many white people with dreadlocks. They are everywhere. And they're always asking me things like, why can't I say the N-word if it's in a song? Or explaining how colorblind, explaining how they're colorblind or wondering why their sushi tastes like weird. Why their sushi rice tastes weird. <laughs> and that's very true. You do find a lot of those kind of guys over there. Should you be able to shrug off the casual racism of these ultra modern liberal Berliners? You still won't escape the city's overlay of graffiti, which rather than convincing some quality of ambient cosmopolitanism, um rock sort of the dens um the soul clip love is here graffiti is liberty it's not giving counterculture so much as its sensibility of a boomer director of a legacy non-profit in berlin i experienced x that i never thought possible but the graffiti is still better than a state of advertisements blow job for free proclaims an ad for reusable bowls a poster for a high abv beer featuring a giant pink vagina promises to be the most illegal beer in the world the other day I wandered into an art gallery in the heart of Berlin and the exhibition du jour was an artist recording a recent orgy. <laughs> Brilliant Berlin baby. This is a city infected with preteen ideas of being edgy. That's very true. They definitely think they're doing a thing when they have a model walk down the runway naked or when they have some guy walking down the street in just a pair of sandals or when the artwork itself is a fucking, you know, a, a pudding on the floor with a spoon that looks like it's been covered in shit like and it's just fucking all right like give it up man we understand your this is a a piece that's fucking talking directly about the war in ukraine okay we get it but fuck off i could go on about the lack of taste for example berlin is home to the worst dressed people in the world 
everyone looks like they've been assaulted at a thrift store but coincidentally this thrift store only carried everything two sizes too big in time one learns that the bad outfits there do draw attention away from the even worse haircuts no one on the planet besides zendaya should be attempting micro bangs and you know what's really funny about the looks i think that's part of the beauty of it i think that's what makes club culture specifically on nightlife way more fun there because people actually go to have fun and don't go under the premise or under the assumption that they're going to show out they're going to stun they're going to shut it down it's all about me it's almost a weirdly collective feeling when you're going out like you're going out on your best behavior to make other person to make your time fun and to, then by default that makes other people who you don't know's time fun blah 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 it's a weird thing but most importantly i think doing away with the need to wear particular items apart from the psychos that go to Berghain and want to dress all black to try and get in most people go and essentially it's quite freeing because you don't feel like you are obliged to you know present a certain image you're not obliged you, you don't feel like you're going to be judged if you wear a certain item it's almost quite free especially for adults who need permission i don't ever i wear what the fuck i want but adults that need permission to do certain things feel very free feel very liberated when they go to berlin because it does allow you to kind of do what the fuck you want and no one bats an eyelid whether it's you wearing you know a skirt as a fucking jumper or if you're wearing tights as gloves whatever you want to do people won't even care so that's probably one thing why it makes it actually a fun city to be in and live in it continues but the worst part of berlin or germany in general has got to be the workplace no one neither americans nor germans will agree with me on this but i staunchly believe that 30 vacation days per year is too many vacation days throw a rock at any berlin workplace and you can bet it's rife with absenteeism and chaos okay because i guess this person's american how many vacation days do fucking americans get what the fuck are they talking about how many let's see i'm curious to see this vacation days in the usa oh <gasps> you guys get 10 only typically u.s employees will allocate 10 paid vacations per year to each employee increasing the days provided based on the amount of time so it's like how we are in the uk every year you stay with a company it adds one more year to your vacation or something after a certain year 10 days no fucking way bro is this 10 days including let me check the chat guys is it 10 days including public holidays or is that excluding public holidays please don't tell me it's including please don't tell me it's including is it 10 days excluding public holidays because 10 days is fucking insane let me know what you guys say in the stream chat i'm very curious to hear this 10 days <laughs> bro if we take off 10 days we come back and get fired <laughs> wow it's more like free paid time off and the rest of them is not paid off time wow man i got i've got to be i gotta shut the fuck up then i take it for granted i think in the uk we have like 26 if they get 30 we have i think 30 is including the the, the public holidays so yeah so we get 28 we get 28 but that also includes public holidays for the most part wow that is insane bro okay yeah we get 28 but i think i think 28 it does include public holidays yeah it does include bank holidays bank holidays can be included in the minimum yeah exactly all work exactly all work so in the uk bank holidays are included in the 28 which makes complete sense but wow bro you guys get only 10 days of vacation 10 days of on top of public holidays okay cool they that's why they say americans know nothing about countries no time no money to travel okay you know what dan soul that makes a lot of sense now the the lack of curiosity americans have about other countries isn't lack of intelligence it's just because you don't have time to worry about that shit you have to pay your bills you have to fucking pay your taxes you have to fucking pay your land dues all that short nonsense you got in the states your health insurance you literally have to do so much to keep the lights on. You can't be worried about what's going on in fucking Sudan or what's happening in Greece or the fucking immigration situation in Sweden. Like that's not something you're fucking worried about because you literally have so much on your brain. 10 days of vacation is nutty though. Absolutely nutty. I couldn't believe that. 
But I also don't agree with this writer who says they think tw- they think thirty days is too much. Do you guys do you would you guys agree that thirty vacation days per year is too many vacation days? I guess if you're the owner of the business, probably because if you own if you have a business and you have a hundred employees and they all have thirty days of vacation, it's going to be quite a, a arduous task, torturous task to navigate and coordinate who goes on holiday when. Obviously, in regular places, no two people from one team go on holidays at the same time. But you still have to sort. How do you have? You know what I mean? How do you make sure that half the office isn't away at a particular total time at the same time? It's a bit hard. But then you also can't deny people they actually want to go away and they've put in their requests early. So it's a fucked up thing. But I personally think that's why we have good work life balance, though. But that's probably why we don't earn enough money. We complain about the money we make in the UK compared to you guys in the states. But you guys also work way harder than we do around the clock especially without you know holiday and you know paid holiday we take way more time off um, we have way more liberties with sick leave and shit so it makes sense why you guys are where you are it continues this is what happens when people are constantly going away on hikes or visits to friends in switzerland and vienna trust me when i say that i have successfully worked at four separate berlin-based companies and i've never had to do more than two actual days of work per week wow now that i mention it I don't even think I'm totally positive about that at my current boss. Or what's that? I don't think what my current boss actually looks like. It's been a while. Sorry. Now that I mention it, I don't even think that I'm totally positive about what my current boss actually looks like. It's been a while. This sounds awesome in theory. If you're the type of person unconcerned with wanting to contribute meaningfully to society. But the end result is that everyone is in a little bit of a pissy, passive aggressive um at all times. Sorry, it's uh, really let's go that again. This sounds awesome in theory if you're the type of person who is unconcerned with wanting to contribute meaningfully to society. But the end result is that everyone is a little bit pissy, passive aggressive all the time. Now no one knows what everyone else does and nothing else gets done. I have z- learned zero new skills, absorbed almost no good art, but okay, last weekend in Vienna was pretty great. I don't, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if we are more pissy and passive aggressive in Europe or in the UK compared to our US counterparts. I don't think that's true. I think all workplaces, people get pissy and passive aggressive. Um, probably you guys, I've heard people say when they've worked with offices in the US, you guys are too like, ha ha ha, like golden retrievery. Everyone's laughing and too many pleasantries it's like a bit too much positivity positive like i remember someone's actually telling me like one thing they noticed about working with american people was that they love positivity like they don't like bad news like the manager doesn't want to hear it like tell me tell me the bad news to one side but don't announce it to the team you know what i mean we have to manage expectations it's like what like they're gonna find out anyway like why are we you know what i mean let's treat them like adults like nah tell me to the side you know what i mean don't ever spread bad news in public or it's, i don't know i found that to be a bit odd but one thing I've learned from this article is that American people earn their money. You guys only have 10 days of paid vacation. You guys really make your money. You earn every money you make out there. It doesn't matter where you work. The fact that you're only, you're working all year round and only have 10 days you can take possibly. But like Koyla mentioned in the chat, it's not like you can take 10 days in a row. If you do to take 10 days in a row, you might not come back to a job, you know, so that you run that risk as well. So you guys definitely earn your Skrilla for sure. You don't, you know, fuck me, bro. 10 days. 10 days. It's absolutely crazy. Big up Eduardo. Listening to AZ is the closest I've got to going overseas. <laughs> oh, what do you say? Um, Jack Donahue says, stop saying it's 10. Dude, 10 is a, is not national figure. So what is so what is a national figure then, my friend? If it's not 10, let me know. If I got it wrong, let me know. What What is a national, let's say... Um, national figure of vacation days in u.s it's it said 10 but let's see how many vacations did you get in the usa 11 days of paid vacation per year in the private sector and average number of paid vacation days after five years increases to 15 after 10 years to 17 so the more you work somewhere the more vacation days you get well unfortunately we're in a come what we're in a come what we're in somewhat of a recession so it's probably it's fair to say a lot of people aren't w- going to be working in companies for 10 plus years going forward. It's just not going to be common. So, you know, the ability to go and have 11 days is not going to happen or 17. Um, there's no legally mandated vacation time in the UK. 
in the US. Oh my god, you guys, how is that possible? How do you guys how do you guys work in this place? What no legal mandate for Baker? Let's see, let's see this. No legal. Oh my god, no legal Elia mandate for vacation days in US. All 50 states where vac vac vaccines. No, vacation. I also vaccines. Vacation. Vacation days. Let's see what that says. In the US, there is no law requiring employers to provide. Wow. Paid leave is a perk. Oh my fucking God. All respect to my US listeners. My US watchers and US listeners, I respect you guys immensely. There is no legal requirement for an employer to provide any paid leave of any kind. Paid leave is a perk used to attract quality employees. Wow. Big up Jack Donaghy Jr. Wow. I'm blown away. I'm honestly blown away by this. There's no legal requirement. <laughs> oh my God. I would, like, we are so soft in the UK and Europe. We're so soft. We are so fucking soft because I think I would break down in tears at, at my work, at my desk, in the toilet, at the coffee machine, if I found out that I, I didn't have any paid leave. I would break down in tears. Literally break down in tears. Wow. Oh my God. And the funny thing is in the UK, like that paid leave that I told you about, the 28 days, that applies across the board. Even if you work at fucking McDonald's, you can still get 28 days of fucking holiday or maybe 26, but definitely in the 20s. How's that make you, do you know how nuts I must sound to an American person that you get 20 plus days of paid lead working full time at McDonald's? <laughs> it makes sense though, because you know, you're working at McDonald's, probably the one place you'd want to go on holiday is when you're working at McDonald's. But imagine if you're working in, in the US, there is no holidays. You turn up every day, you're on shift, you turn up, holidays don't exist. You make it work, you figure it out we are so soft in the uk we're really soft now we're really fucking soft i swear we're soft as fuck because i swear if you worked in mcdonald's let's see um mcdonald's uk mcdonald's uk paid leave vacation day so you watch it's probably 26 same yeah see hourly paid employees see in the uk Hourly paid employees are entitled to 28 days per year, which is pro routed for part-time. So obviously if you're part-time, you know, they break it up based on the hours you work. Holiday pay is accrued as employees work. So you can work in, at fucking McDonald's and get 28 days of holiday per year. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Honestly, man. Yeah, exactly. Pray for us, AZ. Especially those of us living in the South. Yeah, I pray for all of you guys. Honestly, my respect for you guys has gone up immensely. Now that I've learned this, even though I respected you guys anyway, but sometimes I'd throw these like unnecessary little barbs. Oh my God, the US people, you guys. Meh, meh, meh. Now I get it. Now it all makes sense how you guys are the way you are. No legal requirement for paid leave and you still turn up to work every day. Get it done. Pay the bills every day, every day, every day. Rain or shine, every day. Driving miles and miles and miles bus train fuck <laughs> yeah exactly that's why we're crazy and the only thing you have to look forward to is your fucking you know your weekends if that right if that because i imagine like most you know jobs it depends how your fucking rota is done is it sunday to sunday is it monday to sunday like you know sometimes your dev is on the wet like whatever you make it work wow that's also why you, when you guys let your hair down, you let your hair down, innit? This makes a lot more sense now. When you guys let your hair down and you want to party, you fucking go crazy because every other time you're working. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. What an incredible article. But again, check out um, these links. I really like this page. 
amazing all these anonymous blogs they put up on there i'm going to probably read another one about menswear at the on the next podcast which is this one here and there's another one too that i want to check out about brooklyn as well um but there's all these quality um what you call it articles on this site called these links it's a collection of you know hate filled essays on substack so definitely check it out an amazing article here taught me a lot about berlin and also taught me a lot about fucking america and how difficult it is to fucking live there and you know how hardened you this make that, that also makes a lot of sense why you guys survive so much abroad when you guys do decide to work abroad it makes a lot of sense why americans are so good at it because you know look what you put up with day to day living in where you where you guys live so when you come to europe it's like a fucking you know it's like a walk in a park literally and figuratively when you come to the u.s it's like a fucking walk in a park nothing is that hard for you anymore because you have to put up what you have to put up with. So big up everybody, um, you know, over there. I respect you guys fucking immensely. Fucking hell. What a fucking crazy place to be.